This brings us to the case of Dr. Rodanaya, George Rodanaya, a young Russian fellow, very intelligent, became a PhD and MD, but before that had trouble with the KGB and couldn't get out of Russia. In fact, when he tried to get out of Russia, he was purposefully run down by the KGB, overriding the sidewalk and running over him. And this is how his accident started and his story started. As a psychiatrist, as a neuropathologist, for me, God never existed. I never believed in God. I never believed in the uh, Bible. I never thought about uh, God or Bible or, or divinity. In 1976, I was 20 when I was uh, already a doctor working in Georgia. I uh, met a lady from uh, Texas and uh, I tried to leave the country many times, but I didn't have such a help. This lady tried to help me, and uh, I became in big trouble with KGB. Uh, because my work, I worked on adenosine triphosphate, it's a neurotransmitter in our brain, and with the conjunction of uh, oxytocin, I discovered several things, and I was a scientist, and uh, KGB didn't want me to go, so that's why uh, they decided to kill me. That's how I got into another dimension of my life. I was standing on, uh, on the sidewalk, uh, ready to depart to uh, New York, uh, waiting for a cab, uh, when a car ran on the sidewalk and uh, hit me. I flew 10 meters and I fell, and then run. the car runs over me. Uh, my friends and relatives took me to hospital, and uh, the hospital uh, staff, friends of mine, and uh, two other professors uh, constated or declared me dead. They put me in morgue in a freezer, and uh, uh, three days later, they took me out on Monday. It was Friday night, and on Monday morning, they began my autopsy. And uh, these three days being out of my body, seeing everything what was happening around, seeing myself, my body, seeing my birth, uh, my parents, um, my wife, uh, my child, my friends, um, I saw their thoughts, I saw what they were thinking, how they uh, how, how, how their thought moved from one to another dimension. It was incredible experience. I was in darkness, in total darkness, and this darkness was pressing. This darkness existed not beyond, but existed within. What I want to say is that darkness was pressing, and I was in the middle of this sphere, and, uh, and I didn't understand why and how this darkness existed. Where was I? And uh, I understood I didn't have a body because I didn't feel it. But then I thought about light. I, I, I went through that little hall into light. Uh, but light was more powerful, more burning. I mean, you cannot compare it to anything. And it, no word can explain it. And, and this light was so burning and, and, and uh, um, uh, going through flesh. But I didn't have a body. That was the most, uh, most interesting part. And I was scared of that light. I thought, where is that hall to darkness, go to shade, to save myself from this light? What is that light? I don't know. I mean, it can be called light of God. It can be called light of life. But light is light, and darkness is darkness. And then, as a psychiatrist and scientist, I didn't uh, think about that. The only thing was that I was in light. We were not raised in God. We were, you know, Soviet Union. We didn't go to church. We didn't have... There were people who went. But they were some kind of limited people, we thought. I mean, we thought they didn't know better that there is no God. But uh, during that three days being in morgue, in a freezer, changed all my life. 
to begin the autopsy, they, uh, they began to cut my chest, that, that was the first incision, then I opened eyes. So when I opened eyes and he saw the pupils were convulsing, uh, I'm becoming smaller to say simply, um, he, he saw that it was uh, reacting on, on light, it means it's life and uh, they put me back uh, into hospital and began resuscitation.